both on the clinical side and the research side, say it takes about two, two and a half decades to go from benchtop research to clinical medicine. It may take 10, 20 years before some of the stuff is, quote, standard of care. Like the data for circadian biology is obvious. The Nobel Prize was already given for it, you know, in 2016. So, I mean, when you hear that, it's kind of like the same story with nitric oxide. Yeah. Nitric oxide was, you know, given the Nobel Prize in 1992. But you know what the problem is? Even to this very day, it's 2020 now. Does everybody really understand what the implications of the 1992 Nobel Prize was for clinical medicine? The answer is absolutely not. You know, our modern medical system is focused on what do we do when someone's really, really sick? And I find the conventional approach uh, to medicine as being a little bit like putting out fires constantly instead of paying attention to why the fires get started in the first place. Three years of cardiovascular training, I learned how to take care of very sick people uh, who, you know, were, you know, way late into the game. You know, they were already having heart attacks, strokes, they've already had bypass surgery, they have congestive heart failure, weak hearts. And we were just mostly putting band-aids on people and putting them back out in the world. Um, we never really answered the, the question, you know, what was the initial root cause that set this in motion? And could we get back to a more optimal way of health? We can treat acute infections. We can treat acute diseases, acute surgical diseases, but we are absolutely horrible at managing and reversing chronic disease. Unfortunately, it, it took a lot of time and a lot of chronic disease for me to get that. And, and I, you know, I have a lot of physician friends and they just don't buy it. They don't believe it because they're still caught in the cognitive bias that, you know, if I didn't learn at med school and it's not in my journals, then it must not be true. And I really don't fault them. I mean, their head's down taking care of, you know, 10, 12 heart attacks a day. And it's like, you don't have time to go read this stuff unless it just super interest you, you know, or you had a health issue that you couldn't fix with traditional medicine. And then you figured it out on your own, like, hey, I got to do this for myself. I mean, I've read papers in the last three or four years from, I mean, the 1920s, teens, 30s, 40s, science that's been forgotten, ignored, not handed down in medical school. And it's not handed down in medical school because it's not making anybody any money. And so there's no incentive for the pharmaceutical industry to continue doing research on it. And they drive all research and development in this country and there's nobody actually paying for translational research in how light affects health and health outcomes. And that is why people are only just hearing about this now. The reason why we have such a disconnect between this type of research and modern medicine is because Big Pharma has a death grip, not only on research, but also on medical education. And the reality is there's very little revenue to be made with this paradigm because most of what we recommend is either free or very inexpensive. You don't need a patent for sunlight. People just need to go outside and take their clothes off and do sensible solar exposure. The problem is what does big pharma and dermatologists and eye doctors tell you? There is no sensible solar exposure because if you do go in the sun, you're not going to need our solutions. That's the point. That's the point that the regular Joe needs to get to. And what I just said right there, that's not controversial. That's blatantly obvious. It's medical fact. It's not opinion. It's not even hyperbole. And nobody knows about, nobody talks about this. None of the primary care doctors understand it yet. Uh, hopefully we can get the message out and we can change the, uh, the dialogue.